What's up, it's Cinema Shogun here, and the story surrounding the missing toddler from Savannah, Georgia, Quentin Simon, is getting crazier and more suspicious by the minute, and now his babysitter is even speaking out. So without further ado, let's listen to what she has to say, and then I'll be right back with my thoughts. I have been keeping Quentin and Zane for six months. Um, I kept them yesterday, and... They went home last night. Diana McCarter says she babysits little Quentin and his siblings and was supposed to watch them this morning. She says she was confused as to why plans would change so suddenly. I got a text this morning saying that they would not be here. I would not be babysitting them at 529, which was kind of odd because I have them even when she doesn't work. 30 minutes later, 6 a.m. was the last reported sighting of Quentin, according to police. Diana says other family members asked her where Quentin might be. And then I get a text at 9 o'clock saying, have I seen Quentin? I immediately go to their house. I try to help them look. They didn't want that. So I've just been waiting around like everybody else. Diana and other neighbors are shocked by the news and wonder what could have happened to little Quentin. My heart is broken. Um, I'm not his mother, I'm not his family, but I love him very much. And I just don't know what could happen. The police did a really good job of looking. And where does a one-year-old go? They've covered a lot of ground. It's really hard watching that clip because you can tell, even though she's not part of the family, that she's deeply affected by this. Probably more affected than Quentin's own mother, but we're not going to get into that. But what I will say is this. That text message at 5.30 a.m. canceling the babysitter is the main thing that sticks out to me and the main thing that makes me believe that there may be foul play involved. If not for that text message, I would keep my mind maybe a little more open to the fact that maybe he just walked away, which I don't think that's the case, but that text message almost solidifies it for me. You text the babysitter at 5.30 a.m. telling her, you no longer need her services and then your kid goes missing like 30 minutes later and then you don't report him missing for like three and a half hours. And then they tell the babysitter that they're not going to be there, even though they're there. I mean, Quentin isn't there, obviously, not anymore, but they were at home. Now, when someone lies, they tend to overshare. If you don't need a babysitter services, do you need to explain why? Do you need to go out of your way to tell her that you're not going to be home? Hell, just tell her, hey, I don't need your services today and leave it at that. Now, this babysitter says that she babysitted Quentin for like six months now, no matter what, regardless if the mom was working, not working. It doesn't matter that she had the kids. So she found it very odd today that they canceled on her. And then around 9 a.m., they call her. Have you seen Quentin? Obviously, she hasn't. You all canceled. But they called her almost as if, I think it's to set up an alibi. But listen, I'm not buying it, but I don't want to speak too soon here. But they called her around 9 a.m., which I believe was about 30 minutes before they even reported the child missing to the police and asked her if she'd seen their kid. Now, another thing that really sticks out to me is the fact that the babysitter literally said she immediately went over to the house, frantic, worried about this child, and asked them if she could help look for him. And they didn't want it. They didn't want her help looking for this child. Why is that? If my kid goes missing and you show up at my front door wanting to help, I'm going to accept it. All eyes, anybody that can help look. Yet here they have the woman who's responsible for watching their kid almost every day. And when she comes to help, oh no, we don't want no part of your help. That would lead me to believe that they did something wrong. Now, I'm not trying to accuse anyone of anything, but that's what it would lead me to believe. And I have a hard time at this point believing that there isn't foul play involved. Because like she said, I don't think a one-year-old toddler just gets up and walks out that house and makes it too far. And there's all of these other red flags that are all coming together. And it just points towards the fact that there was foul play. And this babysitter and that text message 
almost 100% confirms it for me. But we have to wait and see what comes out of this. Now, I can tell you this whole community is in disarray right now. I know people within this community. And they want closure. They want to know what happened to this kid. Because right now, there are families in this neighborhood with young kids of their own. And they're scared to death because a one-year-old just went missing from their neighborhood. Now, I want them to be able to sleep better at night knowing that, hey, are at least knowing what happened to this kid. If there's someone in the area that is stealing one-year-olds at six in the morning, this community needs to know. And if the mother or the boyfriend had something to do with this, then this community needs to know because then they could rest better knowing that, hey, maybe my kids are a little bit safer. What I will say is this. I do have people close by to the area that could provide some footage for me of this area so we can get a better idea of the location, a better idea of the surroundings. I could have boots on the ground looking around this area, but they're afraid to do so because of all of the weird stuff that's been going on in the true crime community lately. They don't want to be randomly picked out and thrown into a big conspiracy theory as if they're guilty of something just because they sent a YouTuber some video footage. So right now, I don't know what's going to happen. Maybe I will have some exclusive footage. Maybe I won't. At the same time, I'm battling within myself because I don't know if I even want to put anyone in the position of becoming part of a conspiracy theory on YouTube because there are a lot of weirdos, not all, but there are a lot of weirdos in the true crime community. So I don't know if I'm going to get this exclusive footage. And even if I do, I don't know if I want to show it, but stay tuned. That may be coming. But for now, I'm glad we heard from this babysitter. I'm hoping we hear more updates. I know they scaled back the search. Who knows what's going to come of this, but I will bring you all some more updates in the near future. So hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell, and I'll talk to you all in the next video.